All right. I'd also be, he said, and this guy must ask two questions. He said, I'd be curious about how you guys think Bucks use the wind going from bed to food. Do they move earlier with the wind in their face and things like that? Um, I did a whole article on that once. It was really good. Um, but to, to, to brief it, um, uh, I think uh, deer go to bed and they, they make sure they smell the bed and make sure the bed is a secure area before they go in. So mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll semi-circle it. Sometimes they just come around and come in from downwind. <laughs> but uh, when they leave the bed and go to food, I don't think there's any regard for wind. And uh, I've gotten in some um, arguments about that with uh, other hunters and some hunters that really I have some respect for. Um, and I remember one guy that's killed a lot of big bucks who told me that uh, I'm dead wrong. Bucks always go into the wind, nose into wind. And uh, he said every buck he's ever killed coming out of bedding has done that. And I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, how many times have you ever hunted them with the wind to your face? He said, never, because they don't come out like that. Yeah. You know? Well, I have killed them that way. I've killed them every which way you can imagine. I've, I've killed them coming out with the wind to the face. I've killed them coming out wind to tail. I've killed them on crosswinds because I hunt all those. Now, if I, I'd say if there's any kind of trend to it, I believe they come out a little earlier when the wind's in their favor. Um, maybe go a little further so that you get a little advantage of them having the wind in their favor. But I don't think the wind is a dictator of which direction they're going to go. If deer always moved into the wind, wind to nose, they'd all end up in the ocean drowning after a few days of the same wind. <laughs> they, they just go to their food source. They're not that smart. You, you know, I think uh, wolves and coyotes are more smart with stuff like that. Um, but they are smart enough to check out danger zones. So I have seen them do things like um, go to the downwind side of a field before they walk out into it, like circle it, you follow the tracks, you see that. I've yeah. watched them uh, go to the uh, lowest point of a field before they go into it. And uh, now that's common knowledge, but um, the old school mentality has always been that they do that because they're out of sight. They're down that low spot. That's not really true. The reason they do that, and if you disbelieve me, walk around in the evening when you see them do that and drop milkweed anywhere in that field, it'll float to the lowest point because thermals always drop to the lowest point. So they'll go to that point where all the, the anything that's going on in that field, the scent will drop down to that spot, which is how they bet a lot. A lot of times in hill country, you'll see them in those ravines and stuff in a spot where you can't get near that spot because no matter where you drop milkweed from, it goes to the spot where they bet. Well, they do the same thing when they come to a field edge, but their travelings, I don't see it so much. And, and even when they come out of bed, I mean, they, they go from point A to point B, but when they get to point B, if they're leery of it, they'll circle around to the downwind side or, you, you know what I'm saying? But their travel routes, I don't see it much at all. The main time I see them use wind to travel is in rut when they're looking for does and they're trying to smell does. Then they'll take like uh, leeward ridges where they can smell below and above and they'll they'll walk, you know, right where the wind meets the thermal. Um, they will walk downwind uh, of doe bedding, um, things like that. But I really don't see them um, travel much. They bed a lot based on wind and how wind will travel to their beds and stuff. But that travel out of bedding, I don't see that much. What's been your uh, experience? Yeah, I've never been able to to pattern something like like that where they, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like you. Every I, one of those uh, you got with the wind and nose. Yep, exactly. Yep, all these have been <laughs> shot on a northeast wind, and so no. all <laughs> only on a northeast wind. No, I'm, I'm with you. I have never somebody that I had that conversation with very mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and not to, uh, I mean, to be frank, I. I don't know. I haven't paid that much attention to it to, to be honest with you. Like I don't, I, I have, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly how all these bucks behind me. You well, yeah. Cause you set up on how they come out not based on the wind. Yeah. You just set up on exactly. the wind being safe for you. Yeah. I've never found it to be an effective like 
or, or, or patternable enough to pay attention to it, I guess. So I, th- I think a lot of times in hill country, um, a just off wind is important and it's not for that reason, but the main reason is, is because you, you hunt above their bedding in a lot of cases because below them, you get that thermal problem and you get their eyesight problem, but you can get above mm-hmm. them and get close a lot and you hunt off of those points and stuff. And they're bedding on that point when the wind's blowing on that point. So you're trying to find some wind when they're bedding on that point, but the wind ain't going to them. So you get that just off wind and you get to the side of the point where it blows over, you know, it blows over yep. the um, draw. You, you know what I'm saying? And they still come out yep. kind of the wind knows, but you're off to the side and you can shoot the, to where they come out to. Hey, everybody. If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe right here. And if you like the clips, I got two more options for you. Two options right here. Subscribe right here. See you guys.